great evening. Hello, this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and glad in it because he created for us to make impact within the earth. And we are grateful for the day, for today. I am Renee. And I'm Gerald. And we thank you. We are Arise Kingdom Life Ministries, where life is leadership, integrity, faithfulness, and excellence. And today is day 13 of August Proverbs and Prayer. So let's go in. Let's see what God says. And we're going to let Pastor Blackman lead. In Jesus' name. Let Pastor Blackman lead. Y'all let me lead, meaning I'm not let to be lead, elite leader. Hmm. 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 Doesn't sound inviting. Would you like to come aboard the train? <laughs> I would love for you to speak, sir. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And I'm just messing around anyway. Um, all right. So, well, uh, again, good, good evening, everybody. Um, we're not going to be before you long. This is day 13. And so we're just going to talk about some stuff that we find Oops, in the scripture. Okay. In the scripture, um, as we study today from uh, Proverbs chapter 13, um, there's some things that some just some points that I just want to put out there for everybody to grasp real quick. First of all, we must change. As we've been reading through the Proverbs, it has taught me that that we must change our perspective as it pertains to how we live daily. Looking at and examining how we live, the decisions that we make is vital. It is key to us being uh, fulfilling our destiny. It is key to us being that light to others, key to us carrying out the kingdom of God in the earth, key to us being that representative of the kingdom of God. So changing our perspective on how we live daily is important. Why? Because there are consequences for making good decisions. And then there are consequences when we make negative decisions. And so a lot of times when we make, when we're making decisions, we don't really consider the consequences that could come with the decisions that we're making, especially when we allow our emotions to get involved. Uh, one of the things that I do on the side is I referee. And, and I was refereeing some games recently, and I just did not like the way the coach was talking to the players. And so they ended up losing the game. But, I mean, during the game, the coach is going off, coach is yelling, who wants to play? Who wants to play? I mean, he's just being negative with his words. And they ended up losing the game. And after the game was over, as I was walking past the team, the team was sitting on the bench. Kids were talking to their parents and all. And they were just sitting there complaining about the coach, not the parents. The kids were. And how negative he is and, and, and how negative he talks to them. And, and I'm like, well, I can't say anything to argue with them because, yeah, I heard the negativity. Um, and so, but but I'm sure when he was yelling at them, he wasn't thinking they're going to have a meeting about me after this game. Right. I'm, he didn't think that I could be destroying some child's future that I could be hurting someone. So like when we make decisions on what we're going to do, one, we got to consider others. We've got to consider, you know, am I trying to bring correction? And if so, am I bringing correction in a godly way? Meaning in a way that they will hear what I have to say and make changes in the areas that they need to change. Or are my words going to be so piercing and so sharp that it's going to cause problems and cause them to not want to participate? Right, right, right. So we've got to we've got to think about the consequences. What's the consequences that may come from committing adultery? What's the consequence that may come from lying, consequence that may come from uh, gossip, the consequence that may come from saying something positive to somebody. What might be the consequence for saying uh, something lovely or giving somebody a gift? Whatever decisions we are making, yeah. we need to make sure that we are rep well understand that we represent the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And when people see us, they see God. They're supposed to. And so that it is important for us to make those changes. Many of the negative choices that we make are choices that we grew up making. 
that we were born into making through our surroundings, through our neighborhood, through our families. And so the way that they handle situations, we kind of learn from them. And so like, like, uh, you know, if, if you had a mother that was always yelling and fussing and going off, that would explain why you yell and fuss and go off. Or if you have uh, uh, somebody that is, is is always loving and always doing kind things, if your parents are doing that or you're surrounded by people that are doing kind things, it tends to it'll rub off on you. You know, have you ever been around the kids and you could tell who, what we used to call, what we used to say, they have home training. <laughs> Why? Because they've been, you could tell how they act. You could tell they've been accustomed to what they've been accustomed to, what they've been around. Mm -hmm. And so when we begin to evaluate ourselves, we've got to ask ourselves the question is, are the decisions that I'm making decisions that are of the kingdom of God? Are they fruitful? Man? Are they fruitful? Or am I making decisions from the way I grew up? Because I heard somebody say one time, they say, they, they said, uh, uh, um, I'm saved. But deep down, I'm still a G. And so, I mean, we knew, you know, hey, okay, yeah, well, he grew up in the hood with the gangsters and all them and all that. But he's like, deep down, I'm still a G. Well, that's got to change. <laughs> yeah, deep down, it got to change. I mean, I know you saved now, but I mean, and that don't mean you still, you, you, you got an, don't make that an excuse for you. To, to represent to, that action. <laughs> yeah, to act a fool. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, but so we've got to be in a position where we are willing to change, be corrected and make changes in the areas that aren't all that good. And that we may have been accustomed to and grew up around because in, 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 if we continue that, then it's going to produce negative things in our lives. Yep. 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 And so, um, I know changing is difficult. It's difficult for me. Even changing how we eat and being able to eat wiser and being able to eat the proper kinds of foods. There's just, there's things that, that some of us just weren't exposed to coming up. True. No, nothing about my children. They get to do stuff that I would have never, we never went to the mountains and, and, and climbed no mountains coming up. My kids though have been there, done that. My son, he and his his group, they 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 uh down in the mountains, jumping off the mountain into the into the lake, all this kind of stuff. Uh uh, uh, -uh. I mean, we didn't grow up like that. We grew up with with ham hocks and and grew up eating pig feet, stuff like that. Oh lord! And so so some things that we <laughs> did are not necessarily that weren't necessarily good for us. <laughs> yeah. And, and and like I talked about earlier, you know, I used to tell folk, I'm saying, but don't make me show my my blank n word. My blank. Don't make me and 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 and, and I didn't realize at the time that. Well, no, that's the part of me that needs to stay crucified. That needs to be converted. Yeah, stay, yeah, yeah. That needs to be crucified and converted. And so, uh, the Bible says uh, it says in Proverbs chapter thirteen, ignore the word and suffer. So when you ignore the word of God, it brings suffering. But it says when you honor the word of God, you grow rich. Hallelujah. And we want to be rich. That's God's will for us. So that means we must honor the word of God. Mm -hmm. And there's some other things we must do. We must watch our words. Amen. Say watch that. the words that come out of your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We got to watch what we say. We can't be gossiping and lying and, 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 and putting people down and talking negative about stuff. We cannot call use our mouth should not cause discord. Should not cause people to feel crucified. You know, we should be, of course, we have those tough love moments, but our words has to be seasoned with grace. Yeah. Even when we say the things that are for real, for real. Or, the the things that the things that are of God still has to be delivered in a certain kind of way. So that people will hear you. And receive it. And receive yeah, and receive it. 
Um, we've got we must curb our, curb our desires, meaning that yes, we understand we have desires, things we want to see happen in our lives, things we want to do, things we want to experience. However, it cannot be a, a life of selfishness. Right. It can't. You got to realize, yeah, it ain't. It ain't. It's not just about us. So yeah. our desires should be so that I can. I can glorify God with this. Yeah, I desire a big screen TV. Why? What you going to do with it? Well, I'm just going to uh, watch watch football on Sundays. Well, you need to be going to church on Sunday. Or are you using that big screen to also find ways and bring people into your home to show them different movies and things that Bible, about the kingdom yeah. of God? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like I desire a nice a, a nicer car. But the thing is this, it can't be all about you and your nice car. Right. But you've got to use that to glorify God. And you can see that even when Jesus gave us the commandments in the New Testament, love the Lord thy God and, and love the na- your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, so you're not just being um, selfish with things. Um, we must be disciplined and diligent. So there's an order that God wants us to have with our own daily lives. True. And we've got to be disciplined to keep the word of God, disciplined to prayer, disciplined to reading the word, disciplined to loving our wives and loving our husbands, disciplined to loving our children, disciplined uh, not to say things or not let the first thing you think come out your mouth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. and, and, and my wife has been working with me on being disciplined in my facial ex- facial gestures. <laughs> Where cause see, cause she know I ain't got to open up my mouth to say nothing. I can make a face. <laughs> and folk know. Well, I know. They don't know, but well, I know. <laughs> so, so she's working with me on being disciplined <laughs> with that. Um, and then also ha- who watch who we hang with. That's there's that's vital right there. Yeah, now there's a difference between people that may be uh struggling with certain sins, right? Hanging with me. The reason why they are hanging with me because I will serve as a mentor right. to people. Coach and mentor. Coach, yeah, mentor. So that's going to happen. But when you hang with somebody, you are, they, either they are a mentee. I mean, yeah, either they are a mentor to you or they are a colleague. And that level, you can't be hanging with fools. True. Because their foolishness will rub off on you. Yes. The Bible talks about a little leaven messes up the whole bunch. And so we don't want to be hanging around people that are negative, people that don't have faith, that every time you get an idea, they're quick to put it down. Because you'll, you'll go to that foolishness. Yeah. And then you'll be wondering, why isn't the blessing of the Lord backing me? Is because you engage in your mind a mentality that was against the kingdom of God. Yeah, and and some people, I mean, that they're, they're all. If God gives you an idea, it may sound crazy to some people, and that's okay. And that's okay, but you can't let them talk you out of fulfilling what God, the vision God has given you, no matter how crazy it may be. Joshua, it would sound stupid for you to walk around the wall one time each day. And then you're going to tell them, first of all, is how are you going to keep everybody quiet the first six days? Right. That's a challenge in itself. And then all day on the seventh day, because you got to do it seven times. And then he's just going to say, yell at the wall. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. You know better than that. You smarter than that. I mean, you know, people will try to get you out of what God has shown you. So you got to you got to be around people that are of faith. Right, right. Yeah. Well, but sometimes we come up with stupid ideas. Yes, we do. But the people that are of faith, they also are people that hear from God. Yeah. And they will either correct you or help guide you through what you're dealing with. True. But the thing is this, if I'm having problems in my marriage, I don't need to be talking to or hanging around folk that also got marriage problems. How you going to tell me how to love my wife and you can't love your own? Right. We be both struggling. We and both. God do, and God doesn't want that. 
Right. He wants you to gain knowledge. He wants you to increase in your life, your love life, your, your family life, your collegiate life, whatever life you live. He wants increase in every area of our lives. Yeah. And so when we were having some marital issues a few years ago, years ago, years ago, um, the Lord just led me to a couple that have been married years. He means that. <laughs> I mean, years. <laughs> and we got in a meeting and they corrected me real quick. Got me straight real quick. <laughs> and, and then got my wife straight too. But I mean, they got me straight really quick. <laughs> and and I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for it. And so that's why it's important to hang around people that are wise. People are wise, who are loving, who are who, go- who care about our souls. Yes. Care about people. Care about you becoming from one place and going to the next and them seeing the fruit of what has happened, you know? Yeah. And so as we've been talking all um, uh, recently, wisdom should be our goal, not miracles or slash breakthroughs to make up for a lack of wisdom and discipline. So we must operate in wisdom and be disciplined. We're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. Go ahead. Uh, you want to pray, Henry? Go ahead. You, it's yours. All right. Father, we thank you for this time together. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you bring your word brings conviction to our hearts that causes us to desire to draw closer to you. I thank you that that you don't you're not sending condemnation, but God, you love us enough as a father to correct us in the areas that we are wrong. And we thank you for wisdom. Your word says, if any man lacks wisdom, we can ask that of you and you'll give it to us. So, Father, we ask you for wisdom and and Holy Spirit, uh, strengthen us to be disciplined in our lives. Father, reveal to us who we need to be around and who we need to not be around. Father, reveal to us your will and your way for our lives. And when decision time is making, we have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying so that we will obey you in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord God, for the fruit that will be manifested in our lives from this month of prayer in Jesus name. Thank you that we are prosperous. Thank you, Lord God, that we are healed. Thank you, Father, that we have joy and peace and and joy in the Holy Ghost because of you. Father, yes, in Jesus', Jesus name. name, we thank you, Lord God, and counting is done. Amen. 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 So today was Proverbs 13. Tomorrow will be Proverbs 14. We're going to go the whole month of August dealing with Proverbs and prayer. We would love for you to join us every night at 845 in the month of August. If you have a prayer request, a testimony, email us at we arise at arise kingdom life.com. We would love to hear from you. And if you would like to sow a seed by faith in our ministry, you can do cash app dollar sign pastors blackman and you can do zell pastor blackman at lotlive.com. We thank you for joining us. I am Renee. And I'm Gerald. We thank you. We are Rise Kingdom Life Ministries. You are blessed. See.